In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we're going to build an incredibly useful AI agent called the Customer Feedback Agent that's going to utilize N8N's form trigger to be able to gather customer feedback about a product or a service and categorize this based on whatever the feedback is. So whether it's a compliment, complaint, or a feature request, our AI agent using the Grok chat model is going to be categorized that. And on top of that, it's gonna add it to the air table based on whatever the category that feedback is. So we'll have a compliment, a complaint, and a feature request air table that we'll build. And on top of that, we'll also add a Slack node, if it's a compliment or a feature request, this is going to send that customer feedback to the proper channels that we're going to have. So we're gonna build uh, two customer channels, one feedback, one for feature requests, and this AI agent is gonna be sending that proper feedback to the proper channel. But if it's a complaint, we'll also add a Gmail note that's gonna send the customer an automatic message saying, hey, we're sorry for the experience, we're working on resolving this issue. This is gonna be an incredibly useful AI agent that you can utilize to build something similar for your business or for your service, for your website, whatever it may be, because you'll be able to add this form trigger to a website and embed it and utilize this AI agent to take care of all the customer feedback that you're getting for your service or product that you're selling all right so let's jump in and get started so i'm on my blank workbook here let's go ahead and name our workflow here let's say customer feedback agent okay uh, our first step this time is going to be a form trigger because we need to be able to gather the feedback from customer so let's go ahead and add the first step and we're gonna you can just search for form and it's gonna the first one the form trigger this is from NADN, so you can just grab this one all right so a few things here the parameters there's a test url and a production url the test url we're going to utilize that because the production url is when you want to have your um, workflow active uh, but for now we can start using the test url so this is the http url that you can copy and paste on your uh, web browser that you'll be able to see this form in there but that's one thing I want to change quickly first of all authentication so again you we don't have to put authentication but if you are using this for um, you know a real life production URL then you can utilize the authentication as well but for this one we're going to keep as none the form path so this is what this path is at the end let's go ahead and shorten that because by default this is just a bunch of gibberish so I'm just going to say feedback and as you can see it on uh, top the url now changed okay for the form title we're just going to say customer feedback again you can you can put whatever you want here the description we're just going to say please provide your feedback here okay all right uh, so this is going to be the label that's going to go on the form. And again, I'm going to show that in a little bit, what this looks like in real life. But let me just put at least one in here so that way you can see. So the first label, we're going to put name. And the field type, it's going to be text because you have all sorts of options here. And the placeholder, I'm just going to say, please type your full name here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and test this uh, step right now so i'm going to copy this okay and we're going to say test step so now it says listening for a test form submission and if we go ahead to our new tab and add this and as you can see right now it's showing the customer feedback so this was the title that we provided please provide your feedback and the name so right now it only has one uh, category and if we just put something here to test it let's say john doe and if i click on submit form now it says form submitted. We go back here, as you can see, I get a um, output that says John Doe. Okay, so that's basically kind of the gist of it. So now knowing that, let's go ahead and add a few more form fields. So the next field I'm gonna add is called the email. So the label, it's gonna be email. The form type, it's going to be email. Oh, actually before uh, I forgot. Uh, on top right here, as you can see, it says required fields. So whatever field you want your customers to provide as a requirement, then make sure you're toggling this required field. All right, so email and the email type is email. I'm just gonna say, please type your email here, okay? And um, I'm gonna leave this as optional actually. So let's go ahead and add another form field. I'm gonna say 
feedback. The field type is going to be text. Yep, that's fine. Placeholder. I'm going to say, please provide your feedback here with as much details as possible. Okay. Actually, you know what? That's too long. Let's just leave it as please provide your feedback here. And we're going to make this a require field as well. So for the respond when, uh, so this is depending on what you're using. So you can always utilize a, um, you know, respond to a webhook. But for this one, I'm just going to say respond when the form is submitted. But you have other options in here as well. Um, for, as far as the options, we don't have to worry about anything at this point because we're just going to utilize this form on the website. Okay, great. So we're pretty much done here. So now if we test this, I'm going to click on test workflow. So it says waiting for you to submit the form. If you go back to the thing and refresh this page, as you can see right now, it's showing our full feedback form here. And this time, obviously you can see that this field is required. It will show at the bottom. And if we click on the email, that won't show up because obviously we made that that requirement. So let's go ahead and fill this. I'm going to say John Doe john at gmail.com hi i really love your product okay so i'm going to click on submit form and as you can see here our workflow got executed and we should be able to grab that um, feedback with the name email and the feedback itself and you can see this in a json format as well okay that's great all right so now let's go ahead and add our ai agent so i'm going to click on this as AI agent. Okay, so this AI agent is going to be actually not a tools agent because we're not utilizing a chat model where this is going to just grab um, the, you know, the from previous note, if it's a chat, because this is a form trigger, we want to be able to manipulate the data that we're receiving. So this time, we're going to choose a conversational agent. And once you do that, in the bottom now, it says the prompt take from previous note automatically No, because we want to define exactly what to take and process here. So I'm going to click on the prompt here and click on define below. And this is where you will define the prompt because you want to instruct this AI agent to be able to categorize and absorb the data that's coming in from the form trigger and do something with it, right? So let's go ahead and provide a prompt. Again, this is going to be a sample prompt, but you can utilize ChatGPT or perplexity to depending on what your need is to be able to, um, you know, provide a really good prompt because that's going to make a huge difference here. But for this particular case, I'm just going to say your role is to determine if a customer feedback is a feature request, a compliment, or a complaint. Okay, so very, very simple. Now, we're going to have to provide this feedback, right? So I'm going to say here is the customer feedback, the colon. And this time, I'm going to grab the feedback from our form submission, because we want to we want to grab the actual um, detailed feedback that we're getting from the form submission from so here, I'm going to grab this and bring it over here. And as you can see now, let's switch to expression and maximize this so that we can see exactly what it looks like. All right, there you go, perfect. And on the right hand side, you can actually see the results. So it says, hi, I really love your product, which is the correct field that we want to put here. So now let's go back and test this step. I want to see what this looks like. Oh, a chat model, sub mode. Uh, yeah, of course, I forgot to add the chat model. So let's go ahead and add a chat model. Oh, let's get rid of this chat model. So you can utilize OpenAI or if you're using this um, on your local machine and you want to have control over your data, please make sure you watch my previous videos to install everything locally the proper way. You can use the Olama chat model, but this time just for, you know, for, for um, adding something different, I'm going to use the Grok chat model. So uh, I already have an account, but if you don't, let's go, let me quickly show you how to create your credentials. So you're going to click on create credentials. You can go to open docs and this is going to give you some uh, instructions. If you click on Grok chat model, you know, it gives you uh, more more instructions. But if we go back, you can create a Grok account. If I click there, it's going to take me to that to their main page. And so just if you don't know Grok, Grok is basically an inference model. The main dif differentiator between Grok and other large language models is that this is extremely fast 
and it's also very energy efficient because of the hardware that they used. These guys are locally based here for me. I live very close to their headquarters. Um, so they're a very cool technology company and, and again, they're improving rapidly. You can actually try, for example, look at what the difference is. If I just kind of type something, um, oh, I have to log in, I forgot. Let me log in quickly. All right, perfect. Let's start it again because that was, what is Grok? Let me just quickly, look how fast it provides the, um, response here anyways so and it also has a free version for the api so you can go ahead and click on start building and follow the api key here so if you click on the api key you will be able to create a new api key from here obviously you have to have an account uh, but you can click on the api key and you can come back to um, your n8n account and just basically add that okay but since i've already done that I'm gonna go ahead and utilize my account. So once you do that, then you'll be able to actually have access to all these models through the Grok chat model. And as you can see, they have all sorts of the open source large language models like the Llamas of the world, the Jamma, uh, Whisper, Lava, all great, great large language models. But I'm gonna go ahead and select the Llama 370 beep because um, this is a pretty decent model. And again, we wanna make sure we're using a good model because we need this agent to be able to categorize the customer feedback that's coming in. So make sure you're using a good model here, okay? All right, so let's just go back to the agent here. And um, we don't have to worry about memory because it's not like we're chatting with this thing. So don't worry about adding memory. I'm just gonna add a calculator in case, let's say for your use case, if a customer is providing a feedback and it involves numbers or calculations, then you just wanna grab this tool for this to be able to uh, get those operations done. Okay, so now let's test this again. So I'm gonna test this stuff. And as you can see right now, it worked, right? All right, perfect. So again, manipulate, I mean, you can manipulate your um, prompt here to make sure that you're receiving the proper answer. So let's say this is, re this is responding, the output might be something that's like a sentence, right? And if you want to be able to only have this um, chat model or if this AI agent provide just a one word answer to be able to categorize this customer feedback as feature request, a compliment or a complaint, you can always mention that here, right? So you can say, please respond, or actually, please make sure your output is only one of the three categories oops above I'm gonna say and you can just copy and paste this actually you can get rid of this above thing too okay or there you go all right so now you're sure that it's gonna respond this way another option is to also if you have a more complicated um, uh, customer feedback or any kind of form submission that you're using, you can use the required specific output format. And if you toggle this on, as you can see on the bottom here, now you will get another um, section added here, which is called the output parser. If you click on this, you can actually add an exact output parser in here, and you can uh, provide the schema. So that uh, you can sp provide the exact JSON schema. And on the bottom, as you can see, this gives you um, uh, an example. So you can always utilize this, copy and paste this, and ask ChatGPT or Perplexity to, hey, can you provide a JSON schema for this particular use case I'm looking for based on the following example. But for our case, like I said, our form submission is not that complicated. So I'm just gonna uh, leave it uh, with this prompt there. So let's test it against to make sure that we got the proper response here. And that's perfect. All right, so now we're receiving only one output. It's either a compliment, a feature request, or a complaint. All right, so that's done. The next step is going to be adding um, a merge node because we want to be able to grab the name and the email from here and the category that's coming out from our AI agent from here and combine them together and ship it off to our next step. So I'm gonna click on add another node here and I'm gonna search for merge. 
So this is a really great tool that NADN already has. It's called Merge. So there, it has several modes. You can append items. So if there's outputs that are coming in from different input, you can basically append them together one after another. You can combine. So we're going to use this combine because we're merging items that are coming in from different spots, right? So we're going to have one item that's going to be coming in from here and another one from our AI agent. So therefore, right, we need to let me get rid of this and put this up here. All right, so this is the first one is going to come from here. The second one is going to come from here. So let's go ahead and now add that. OK, so uh, mode is going to be combined, combined by matching fields. No, not really, because uh, there is no matching fields there for us. We're going to utilize the position because we're going to say combine items based on their order. Right. So we're going to use two here and that's pretty much it. We don't have to worry about um, any options here. And as you can see, the first one is coming in from our uh, form trigger and the second one is going to be coming in from our output. So this basically is going to send all of this data to this merge field and the data from here too. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out now. Oops. Test step. And there you go. Perfect. So now it combined the name, the email, the feedback, and the output that's coming in from our AI agent, right as complement. And you can see the JSON here as well. Okay, that's perfect. OK, so now that we have this data coming in um, from our feedback uh, form and then also from the AI agent, the category, we need to be able to do something with this data. Right. So depending on what this uh, feedback is that's coming in from our AI agent, along with the name and the email, we need to be able to grab that and based on the category, divide it. Right. So let's go ahead in order to do this. Um, and it then also has another great tool that I really like called switch. Um, or you can use if so if you have an if node, the only problem with if node is that it's kind of like limited. So I'm just when you have multiple things, uh, multiple options, you're going to use the switch. So if you just search for switch, this is the one. So this um, has this. Let me. All right, there you go. So now uh, we'll be able to add several categories here and be able to do something with it. Right. So it's almost like an uh, extended and a more useful version of the if node. OK, so the mode is going to be uh, rules. Uh, so let's leave that as it is the routing rules. So now we're going to grab because this is where we're categorizing the data that's coming in from our AI agent. Right. So I'm going to grab again. We'll just grab it from our merge node. So I'm going to grab this input. Sorry, output. All right. That looks good. And we're going to say this is equal to. Yep. Complement. So we're going to create one for complement and we're going to also change the. Uh, we're just going to change this to rename output complement and I'm going to show that in a little bit what this means. OK, and as you can see, oh. And if we get out of this, now you can see this is what that renaming does, right? It just adds um, a note that's coming out. OK, so now let's add another one because we have three categories, right? OK, so the second is going to be same thing. The value is going to be the same. It's going to be the output. Oops, that didn't work. This time if this equals complaint, right? Because that was our second category. We're going to rename it to complaint. OK. Third one is going to be our what do we name our third one? I forgot. It was called a feature request. There you go. OK. And that's good. Feature request. Rename to feature request. OK, perfect. So that's good to go. Let's just get out and make sure that the names are good. Yeah, complement, complaint, feature request. So now let's go ahead and do something with these. So now that these different categories are coming out, what do we do with this? Right. So now let's see for each different category. Let's make sure we add this into a different column in a table that we're going to create an air table. OK, so for this one, you can just click on plus and you can search for air table. And it gives you several options here. We need to create a record, right? Because we need to add this in a column that we will name um, this category, whatever the category is. But we need to add a record or a row in that column. So you're going to click on create record. 
I already have a Airtable account, but I'm gonna show you how to uh, create your credentials and build your table the proper way. So you're gonna create on the new credentials. So let's go to Airtable.com. We don't need this crop cloud anymore. Airtable.com, okay, perfect. So I already have a workspace in there, but if you don't, yours is gonna look blank. Uh, so this is what yours is gonna look like. Yep, right here, you're gonna create a workspace. So I'm gonna click on create a workspace and you can name this customer feedback table. Okay, perfect. You, the free plan is good to go. I mean, you don't need anything more than that. Free plan is perfectly good. All right, so here the workspace is empty right now. So this is where you're gonna click on create and you're gonna start from scratch. You can select the name of the base here and the coloring here. So I'm gonna, ooh, that is tough. But see these uh, lighter colors, I guess they only allow you to do that on the paid version, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So the base, I'm gonna say customer feedback. Okay. All right, so this is where you will have your tables. So this is the first table. So we need to create three tables, right? One for each category that our AI agent's gonna spit out based on the form trigger that the customer sends our feedback. So the first one, in order to name, rename the table, just double click on it and you can change it to complement. Oops, that didn't work. Complement, press enter. Let's add another one called complaint. And one more feature request. All right, perfect. So the table here are the uh, columns that it comes with automatically, but we're gonna get rid of this. So let's delete field, delete field, and go ahead and rename this. You can't, you can't delete this one because that's a default one. So the second column we need is going to be, let's go ahead and add the email. Click on the drop down here. We can select uh, email and save, right? Another one we need to add is the feedback, let's say. Oops, Let me double click on this. This is going to be a long text because this is gonna be the actual feedback that we're gonna grab for our customer, right? Um, so go ahead and do the same thing for your other tables. All right, perfect. Okay, so we got all of our tables set to go. And we have no, oh, forgot about this, get rid of this. All right, so we got all three tables blank completely at this point and the bases under the customer feedback, right? Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and add our, our account here, right? So you're gonna come, once you create your tables on the top hand right corner here, you're gonna click on your account, you're gonna come on the Builder Hub I've already created one, but go ahead and create a new token. So you're gonna come and click on create no to new token. I'm gonna say N -N -N test. Okay, we need to add scopes here. And um, the way to do that is you wanna make sure that you're grabbing the proper scope. And the bottom right here, it says, make sure you enable the following scopes for your token, right? So we need to enable data.record read data.records write and schema.bases read, okay? So you're gonna go back and add scope, data.records read, write, and schema bases read, right? That was the one, okay? I'm gonna create the token, copy this, done, and, and you'll paste that in here. But since I've already done that, I'm not gonna use that. Um, I'm gonna just use my existing uh, one that I created earlier before because it has some data in there. So I'm gonna get out of there and use my uh, Airtable account. The resource you're gonna leave at source, operation it's gonna be create. The base you're gonna use from list and as, as soon as you click on the choose here, it's gonna load that base uh, that we created. So just select that. Mine was my uh, the one that I'm gonna use to edit and feedback. Uh, let me actually quickly show you. So if I go back to my home, 
So I have two bases. This was the one that I created and this is the one that I created earlier. So this is the one named NNN feedback. And if I click on this, as you can see, this has some data, but the columns are exactly the same way. Feature request, complaint, compliment. Um, so I'm going to utilize this because again, this has some data in there already. Okay. So you're going to select your base and from the table, you're going to choose. Now it's going to load the table and all of the uh, columns that you have within that table. In our case, compliment, complaint, and feature requests, right? So let's start with the compliment one. I'm going to click on compliment and it's going to load all of the um, columns within that table itself. Yeah, sorry. This was, these are the, uh, the tables that you have within your base. And once you select your table, in our case, the table is going to be complement. These are the columns that's going to be inside your table. So for example, if I go back here, as you can see, I have name, email, and feedback as comment uh, column within my complement table inside of that and it and fit feedback base. So now we're going to actually create uh, two more Airtable records for our other categories. So I'm going to put this back up here. I'm just going to quickly duplicate this. Duplicate. Boom. Okay, good. And then one more. Boom. And connect this. All right. So we got all three here. Let me move this a little bit this way because it's not a lot of space. Go. Okay, perfect. All right, so we got all of this now. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and actually name this one so that we're not getting confused. So compliment. Let's name this compliment. This one we're going to name complaint. And this one is going to be feature request. All right, perfect. That looks good. Okay, so we got complement, complaint, and feature request, and they're connected to the proper uh, routes here. All right, great. So now let's go ahead and start with this complaint. What are we? What was the test initially? Uh, what's the data that's coming in from here? We're sending a complement, right? So that's the category. So let's go ahead and add that complement the list. That's good to go. Let's go ahead and execute previous node. And it's going to bring in the data here. Let's double check. Yep, it, it took it to the right place. Let's go ahead and okay. So now for values to send to this table for the name, we're just going to grab the name from here. And the results showing John Doe, that's good to go. For the email, we're going to grab the email. For the feedback, we're going to grab the feedback. Perfect. Options, uh, we don't need that. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and test this step actually. If I click on test steps so right now, as you can see, if I go to my table here, my complement table, I have these three records that are coming from Steph Curry and to Anthony Joshua, right? So these are the one that are existing. We should be able to see another record being added here. So if I go back and let's go ahead and see, make, see what's coming out of here. And if we see, it says John Doe, John, what gmail.com. And it says, hi, I really love your product. So it's a compliment. So if we go ahead and test this stuff, this should be able to send that and add a new record. And there you go. Note successful. Get out of this that looks good let's go back to our table refresh the page and john doe john at gmail.com hi i really love your product perfect okay so it looks like that's working let's go ahead and now add a complaint one but before we do that we need to have a complaint that's coming in out of this and being sent to this category right here right because right now if i double click on this there is no data because right now this is categorizing it as complaint and it's sending it right here so we need to add we need to test a complaint once I'm going to delete this. And if you just click on test uh, workflow, right? It says waiting for a trigger event. Go back, refresh this page. Now we can say name as Jane Smith. Email could be Jane at Yahoo. 
gmail.com and the feedback could be I really hate your product all right that's good somebody's hateful but it's all good all right so let's go ahead and submit this form and now if we go back this should automatically perfect there you go now it categorized it as a complaint which is accurate so now let's go ahead and make sure this gets added to the table because right now it's empty the name and the email so we'll be able to add this there so let's go ahead and grab the name the name is going to be here the email right here and the feedback okay perfect so let's go ahead and test this step now this should be able to add a new record jane smith i really hate your product jane at yahoo.com okay let's go back to our n8n tables here oh it got added to the compliments table that's not accurate uh must have done something wrong go there oh because we chose the compliments table here so this should be added to the complaints table okay Go ahead and do that again. Name, email, email, and feedback. Okay, Let's test it again. This time it should be added to the crack table. We go back to N8N. So I'll go back to complaints table. And Jane Smith, I really hate your product. Perfect. All right, great. So, first of all, let me get rid of this. This was the wrong one. Okay, cool. All right, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and check out feature requests. So feature requests right now already have, only have one record. Let's go ahead and add another one to make sure that that gets set up too. So we need to set up, obviously, uh, this one is not added yet because we don't have any data in here, but let's go ahead and do that. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get rid of this so that way I can just utilize this pop-up. So if now, if I get rid of, delete this, Test workflow, I should get a pop-up. There you go, it's in this screen. Now I can just utilize this pop-up. So now let's go ahead and say Jason Tatum, Jason at gmail.com. This is gonna be a feature request. This is gonna be, hi, I like your product, but it's missing an AI feature to summarize the reviews or whatever, it doesn't matter. But this should be clearly a um, feature request that might be coming in. So let's go ahead and submit this form and this time, perfect, there you go. So now our chat model was initiated and it got uh, sent as a feature request. Great, so let's go ahead and set this up. So this time, let's make sure we're choosing the correct table. So. From the list we're going to select feature request the name is going to be this same thing email oops and the feedback that's the response i named this response by the way my um column uh in inside this table so inside my right here feature request this is called response okay so now let's go ahead and test this and make sure this gets added properly. Perfect. Go back and Jason Tatum. Hi, I like your product, but it's missing an AI feature to summarize the reviews. Perfect. All right, that's great. So now we're pretty much done here. So now let's you can further uh, improve this by adding additional. So let's go ahead and add uh, Slack messages that will be sent for the complaint whenever there's a record added to the complaint table and also to the feature request to the proper channel. But whenever there's a complaint, we can add a Gmail note that sends an email directly to that customer. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So for the first one, if you don't have Slack already, so let me pull up my Slack here. So I have these channels, you can always create new channels, but I have a customer feedback request channel and a customer feed, sorry, a customer feature request channel and a customer feedback channel, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and add a Slack. Slack, oops. If you search for Slack here, it should pull up this node here. So this time we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna send a message, right? So we're gonna click on send a message. Select your credentials, very simple. Again, same thing, you just go ahead and um, uh, if you already have Slack downloaded, you'll just connect to your account. And when you click on that, it's gonna pull up this um, permission request. Just go ahead and allow it and it's gonna add your Slack channel to that 
um, um, to your account, okay? But since I've already done that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my existing, oops. Let's go to this. Let me get rid of this. Delete. All right, perfect. So here's my Slack channel. So now it'll have access to all of your channels, to your um, users that you wanna send and all that good stuff. So resource is gonna be a message, operation is gonna be a send, send message to. So I'm gonna choose a channel. You can send it to a, a user as well from the list. So now this is gonna prop all the channels that I have inside my Slack. As you can see, this is the customer feature request and a customer feedback. So this was for compliments. So this, I wanna send this to my customer feedback channel, right? and it's gonna be simple text message. And the message we're gonna grab from the previous note. So if I just say execute previous note, oh, sorry, the execute previous note was going here to the feature request. We'll go ahead and add that actually, because it's already there. So Slack, it's gonna be sending a message. My credentials, message, send a message, send message to a channel. Let me execute the previous node. So this time this was the feature request one, right? So I wanna select the feature request channel that this should go to. Customer feature request message. I'm gonna actually grab this response that's coming in from there, right? Perfect. You can also add this from your other notes as well because um, that's gonna be coming in through there as well. But anyways, that's good to go for now. And if I click on this and let me test this out, test this step. So now it should send test step. Perfect. So let me pull up my Slack, make sure it got through. This was a feature request and there you go. Hi, I like your product, but it's missing an AI feature to summarize the reviews. Perfect. So everything worked out. Okay. So let's go ahead and test the other ones out too. Let me temporarily fix this just to get rid of that. Uh, let's go ahead and add a compliment. So this time I'm gonna test the workflow. Put the pop up here. So this time I'm gonna say Jackie and Jackie at gmail.com. Hi, I love your product and services. So let's say submit form. And this went there. So let's make sure that this is accurate. So this time let's get rid of this message is going to be compliment and the feedback right there you go we're just going to send the feedback to our slack channel here and the channel is going to be customer feedback okay let's test this stuff perfect that went through and if we pull up our customer feedback channel there you go hello oh this was from previously but it says hi i love your product and services perfect and it also gives this NADN workflow link here. So if you click on that, it's gonna take you there. Okay, great. So now you can add for complaints. Let's say we wanna add a Gmail note that's gonna send uh, an email. Oh, I had the wrong one. Add a Gmail node that's gonna send an email directly to that person, whoever they sent it. So let's click on send message. Uh, select your Gmail account. It's gonna be a message. Operation is gonna be send. This is gonna come from the previous, but let's go ahead and do a complaint. Let's get rid of this. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of this for now, the attachments, because it's not gonna be an error. We'll click on test workflow. This time, let's do complaint. Let's, let's go Robert, gmail.com. I hate your products and services. All right, submit form. This should be a complaint. Yep, that's good. Now I'll attach it. Gmail to. So this time we're gonna send it to, so the person that sent the complaint from email, oh, I got the email wrong, of course, but I just put Robert. Uh, but we'll just grab that email and the subject is gonna be, you can just put a subject as customer complaint. Response, let's say or whatever, whatever it might be. You can even grab it. Uh, let's say if you wanna make uh, the subject as the feedback or the title of the feedback or whatever, maybe you can do that or just to create a time or the name or whatever, you know, um, depends on what you wanna do. So for the message, we can do something like, hello, 
and you can grab the name, whoever sent it, right? So hello, Robert. Uh, that doesn't look good. There you go. And you can say, I'm sorry for, for the inconvenience, blah, 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 whatever, right? You can just type an email and then just basically have this step automated where every time you receive a complaint, now we send an automatic email to that user by grabbing the email from that form that came through. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully this gave you a good understanding of how all these tools work together. So you can utilize this for your website, for your services, whatever it may be, be able to completely automate your customer response by adding them to different tables. So that way you can have visibility into what's going on. And with this agent, you'll be able to automate basically everything from the response to a complaint, to adding it to your air table, to your Slack message and all sorts of good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, please make sure you subscribe and like the video. I've got uh, a lot of great things coming up in the pipeline. So I want to make sure you are aware of that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.